you very much, Muriel, for the introduction, and thank you, Tom, for inviting us to speak to you today. My name is Rose Wesby, and I am the head of Plants of Tomorrow, responsible for the program that future-proofs our cement manufacturing operations. I'll be joined today as well by the head of industrial IT for Plants of Tomorrow, Marianne, who will speak much more into the details of a program very important to us. So today we're going to talk all about really what it means to transform a business from end to end, and specifically to look at something even more important, which is transforming a culture, building a new culture of innovation, and ensuring that there is empowerment right throughout the organization to deliver this sustainably. So we're gonna take you through a multi-year journey that we have been on to really optimize our production processes, but on top of that, to introduce AI, not just as a tactical solution, but an incremental, a core component part that is going to strategically change the architecture across the business. Before I go into the presentation, I wanna share something with you which is about the urgency. You know, why is this so important? Why do we need to do this right now? And I'd like you to hopefully take this away with you. Every year, millions more people are being affected in their homes and in their cities by the effects of climate change. And at the same time, urbanization is continuing. In fact, at an alarming rate, you might say, every month, a brand new New York City is being poured. And that is not slowing down. We still need that. So what does this mean? It means that it's the building solutions providers like us, like Holsim, who have to make sure that we are providing people with safe places to live and to thrive while simultaneously being able to positively impact the, all of the things that are happening to increase and accelerate climate change. And we are responsible on both accounts. So in that regard, we want to be a leader for this. We want to be the ones to drive what the future looks like. And that's why today this is important to us and so important that we continue to accelerate. So let me see of this. Who are wholesome? You might recognize the name if you're looking at our traditional businesses, aggregates, cement, ready mix concrete, and construction materials, but it's also complemented by an ever-increasing array of building solutions. So our portfolio of building solutions is able to build up everything right from the foundations to the roof of a building envelope. And we're continuing to diversify, to expand the business, in order to make sure that we can offer a holistic, sustainable solution for building. At our heart, we are a very diverse business with more than 60,000 employees in 54 countries and more than 2,300 operational sites. What's incredible is that as well as having this large footprint, we have put sustainability at the core of our business too. We have, uh, I think, more than 55 carbon capture utilization and storage projects in place now as part of our roadmap to reach net zero emissions. And all of this has been independently validated by the Science-Based Targets Initiative, who we continue to work with to set the bar, actually, for the market on what sustainable construction looks like. We are innovators at heart as well, and we have more than six sites around the world dedicated to the innovation of our materials as well as our industrial processes. On top of that, we continue to expand our network of startups, all working with us in order to make sure that we are getting the best of the best to help us build for the future today. So our decarbonization strategy is all around decarbonizing building end to end. And of course, we are responsible for our operations, and that's where it starts. We are making sure that what we are producing is as sustainable as possible and is absolutely enabling the net zero vision that we have. But on top of this, we're also working with the architects, with the contractors, to make sure that we are building with less and doing more with less. Throughout the life cycle of buildings, we're also looking at integrating technologies and new processes to ensure that the life cycle of an entire building lasts longer. And to go along with that, when it reaches the end of its life, we're also able to be entirely circular to capture that material and actually recycle and reuse it in creating virgin materials that are not coming from the ground, but are actually coming through that circular process as a whole. So what does a plant of tomorrow look like? For us, it breaks down into making sure that it is performing, 
but it is also producing circular outputs, both to the customers as well as to ourselves and how we operate, and it is net zero. These all have to be fulfilled. And this means that on the performance, it must be efficient, it must be reliable, and it must be profitable. We've committed to spend more than $2 billion by 2030 in carbon capture alone. This is a remarkable amount of money of our profits that we need to reinvest. Where do we get that from? By running high-performing operations. We cannot do any of what we want to do without doing that as well. What does the future customer want? Well, they want flexible and hyper-engineered products specific to their needs. They don't want over-engineered products, but they want the things that will deliver to their expectations. And that's why making flexible manufacturing systems is also an important part of this vision. With circularity, I spoke about the construction demolition materials, reutilizing these materials in our value chain. But what's more interesting, perhaps, is that simultaneously we're looking at total recycling of water, reducing freshwater offtake, protecting nature, and building communities around our sites, in our countries, and intermutual business cases, making sure that we and the community are incentivized to participate in the ecosystem that we are building. And finally, the net zero emissions. To achieve this, we have to change what we're making and how we're making it, as well as capture what's left afterwards. This is a big, big journey for us, but we are dedicated to it with all of the innovative culture that we have at our heart. All of this is possible and enabled by technology. I would even go far as to say that the technology itself is not an inhibiting factor today. You can probably find everything you need with a few developments needed in the carbon capture integration space to achieve the vision that we have for the plants of tomorrow. But making sure that you do have enabling technologies also requires enabling a new culture to support all of the programs and initiatives to get this to be owned by the business, driven by the business, and taken to the new level as well. We have a roadmap of technology, therefore, one that supports any plant to get to the next level. And we have a number of design principles that make sure that we are not getting off track and we are not diverging. And finally, we benchmark ourselves. Last year, we were in the top 4% of manufacturers in their digital transformation journey. Now, this is important as a benchmark, but everyone is on this same race with us. We need to continue to run. We need to continue to make sure that we are in that top percent, that we are actually seeing and living with the technologies that are going to make sure that we are setting the bar for the industry that we have. The technologies. Now, this is perhaps a bit controversial. I wonder if you'll agree with me. But these technologies on the left-hand side in themselves achieve very little. And therefore, it's really important that rather than just buying a buzzword, what we're doing is applying an integrated solution of technologies to an acutely defined business challenge that takes domain expertise, that takes dedication. With doing so, we're then able to unlock value from business cases such as for predictive maintenance or in the future, predictive maintenance. And also, we're able to produce new forms of work, digital work environments that keep our people safe, yet productive, in very reliable systems. The Plants of Tomorrow program as a whole has been running for a number of years. But what's really important is to say that we're not just responsible for the technology. We're responsible for defining and setting an expectation of our culture and enabling our people to take it forwards. This is a huge change management program. And alongside these technologies, we are also making sure that we are doing the change management along the way, not just by us, but by everyone on the ground. 17,000 of those 60,000 people work in our operations. Those are the people that we want to make sure are really driving this for the future. That's the key component. At the end of last year, we'd completed more than 2,000 projects to deploy our proprietary technologies across the group. And we continue to accelerate everything that we're doing. Now, we have some ambitious targets as well. But what's really important, rather, is to give you some examples of what we've been doing over the last years in what I mentioned earlier, predictive maintenance. Now, rather than myself, I'd like this portfolio to be introduced by someone who has really been driving this from the start, has been living this from the start, and can give you a first-hand account of what it meant to go on this journey to achieve our goals in digitally transforming our reliability applications. With that, please welcome me to introduce Marianne Mizoshevich. So 
thanks Ross for introduction. Thanks everybody for having me here. Uh, uh, as Ross mentioned, this is a very big journey. We are working on very many things. And the slide behind me is showing you how we translate these technologies and this functionality to the plant shop floor. So we talk in their languages and we are basically selling them products they understand in the area of maintenance, process optimization, quality, gear mining, or whatever else we are uh, having in our portfolio. Now, the two layers on below are the common one, and uh, actually this slide uh, resembles a lot on the slide from C3 that you see on the architecture. We do have also platform layer where we handle the data, where we handle the cybersecurity and everything which is common between the products. So, with that, I will go to the next one, which is uh, zooming in into one of our maintenance uh, projects. We have run these initiatives for quite some while. Uh, we have invested as a company for many decades in the sensors and the condition monitoring. And we try to leverage uh, machine learning and uh, anomaly detection since 2020. Yeah? Uh, we run there into similar uh, challenges like many of you who work in the reliability area. We have uh, discussed how we set up our data strategy, how we put our architecture and infrastructure. We developed and trained machine learning models. We actually prove their value in operation into the uh, real world. And we actually build application in-house. Huh? So, uh, with that, actually, we even enter scalability. We actually start putting this worldwide into various uh, plants, and we reach actually uh, more than 150 deployments over the years. Huh? Uh, we also get feedback from the plant. We understand what works good, what doesn't work good, etc. But we actually realize that we reach the capacity we can do things alone. And that's when we actually start uh, looking for partners, which led us to our partnership with C3. Yeah? Uh, maybe a few things there of what actually challenges we try to solve with this partnership. One thing is related to data. So we have data, as I mentioned, we invested a lot, but we have a lot of plants. Situation is not the same everywhere. In some plants we have very good data, in some plants we are missing sensors, in some plants sensors are broken, and we actually need to find a way how to handle that. Huh? The same with modeling. We are a cement manufacturing company, so we do have data scientists and they do a good job, but we actually do, cannot provide uh, a top uh, models which actually are already available on the market. So we work with univariate approach. We actually have a quite custom model for each machine which was very specific for that machine and very sensitive on any changes in the environment. Huh? Application we have developed has a, a good appreciation from the, from the business, but actually it was limited in many terms. Uh, it didn't look like a modern application. Back to the keynote from this morning, it was a bit hard to use, if you understand what I mean. Huh? So scaling that was actually the point where we reached the, if you want, uh, end of that road, where we said, okay, now we have done so far, we know what we can do, and if we continue that way, we will need 15 years to cover our asset portfolio worldwide. Huh? So that's another reason why we decide to, to go with more automation and the platform. And uh, okay, so now all of this led us to pilot with uh, C3. We have done it last year, somewhere around four months. Uh, and that pilot was not pilot of showing can we make a model, can we actually get good prediction, etc. Because we were already behind that. We know this is the case. We actually test scalability. So, we did a pilot in 10 plants worldwide. You can see it on the map everywhere from US to Philippines, Europe, Africa, Middle East, and Latin America. Uh, we have decided to use reliability application as a base to speed up development, but we have also developed some things which are custom, which are special for our needs. And we actually managed to improve on top of that models quite a lot, to the level that it was actually two digits reduction in the false positive of the models we have done. No? Now, with that pilot, we have actually proved our business case. We managed to ensure the management that we actually can do it in significantly lower cost, that it can be fast or fast enough to actually cover our asset base in a few years, and it's getting actually better uh, user appreciation and satisfaction with higher quality models and professional uh, GUI. Uh, rather than showing screenshots like this, we have a short video, so we will now run into it. Okay. Welcome to the C3 AI reliability application configured for Holsim. This application has been tailored for Holsim's vertical roller mills. 
The application prevents asset downtime by continuously monitoring sensors and equipment, using machine learning techniques, and increases collaboration among operational and technical teams. As the head of maintenance, I can review the health of all plants in one glance and focus on the ones at risk. As a plant manager, I can have a single, comprehensive view of my equipment and predicted health status. By clicking on a vertical roller mill, I can visualize my equipment and identify the subsystems at risk. Other tabs make it easy to access information such as sensor issues, update liner and roller wear data, or access the latest asset alerts. An asset alert is raised when the AI-generated risk of the subsystem gets unusually high and might indicate an existing or upcoming anomaly. The alert detail page provides evidence on the anomalous sensors. After reviewing the alert, I can close it or open a case to assign it to an operator. In both cases, I can leave feedback to improve the AI model. Reliability engineers can also collaborate with subject matter experts to onboard or update the configuration of equipment directly from the user interface. Thanks for the video. So now, where we are now, we are actually rolling out this solution. We have a four-year plan to, to cover around 1,200 assets. To get a feeling, what does it mean? We talk about complex assets, which typically have five to six models. So we will actually roll out 6,000 models, give or take, in the next four years. Uh, we are now at number 30, so we reach in the last two months 30 assets deployment. And this is done with very small team. We talk about six people in our center of excellence, which combine people from C3, people from Holcim, and also some of our partners working together on this topic. Uh, if we go to the next steps, we are now in discussion with C3 to actually uh, do a, a generative AI on top of our reliability solution. This is the pilot which is already in preparation. It will happen in the next few months. And we are also exploring possibility to to run process optimization or production schedule into our environment. Now saying that, as Rose was showing you, we actually have many other ML applications which we run in our environment, many soft sensors, uh, linear regressions, or quality control predictions, which we are thinking to actually migrate in, in C3, again, to gain the same effect of scalability and cost optimization. Now, all of these things uh, brought us to some learning, and we actually, want to share some of this with you. We did face several challenges in our uh, uh, journey in the last five years, not necessarily in area only on the ML, but in generally in area of trying to scale, let's say, good idea, POC, into something big as holds him over the 150 plants worldwide. So when we have started this journey, the main focus or the main challenge was the business value, how to prove that there is business value behind the idea, behind the POC, and this still remains the business, uh, uh, let's say the main focus of any products we do, uh, but once when we actually manage to show that we can do things in one place, in one plant, etc., the next thing would be how we actually scale. Uh, then we reach to the point of customization, so the things are not the same, we grow with acquisitions, our plants are very different, our assets are very different, cultures where we operate is very different, so we actually need to adapt a lot to scale even to few plants and still to retain the business case because then this customization efforts might be very expensive, very complicated and very long. Huh? When we reach to the point of we are comfortable with doing this few, we start to roll out worldwide. So we start to doing 20, 30 different applications. At that point, we actually build our data platform. Uh, we build the central data platform where we collect all the data. We actually start leveraging cloud. Before that, it was actually just on the, on the premises. And this, this is the point where we thought we solved all of our problems, which was not so true, eventually. So we, we move to the higher scale. We, as I mentioned earlier, we start deploying in hundreds. So we start to do multiple products. We have now 40, and all of them deployed in number of hundreds. hundreds. And this is actually where we hit the, the problem of operating model, how we actually do it, how big organization is behind it. And as Rose mentioned, it's not just organization to actually make the models, but to deploy them, to operate them, to maintain them, but also to drive the change management user adoption and business value generation. So we simply become too big, 
too complicated to, to maintain that speed, and we were still not fast enough. Huh? So at that stage, we were starting speculating and discussing what we can do as a next step, more automation, more uh, uh, better organization, and we switched to the ML platforms. Huh? I think uh, with that, I will close because we are running out of time. There is still one more slide, which is basically just repeating uh, all of these messages in our learning. And with that, I want to thank you and have a nice day. Thank you.